Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about the Amazon Echo Show 15. It's a smart display with just one standout feature in particular. Maybe it's best if I show you. I just got it right here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty big. All joking aside, it's clear that Amazon wants to make a statement with its new smart display. This is the biggest general purpose smart display on the market, and the screen size is 15.6 inches. That's why they call it the Echo Show 15. To give you a proper review though, we have to start on the outside. The Echo Show 15 takes on a tried and true form factor. It's a picture frame. It's got a black frame along the outside, along with a white inside border. There's a camera cutout in the top left corner for visual ID, and there's a few switches on the side or the top, depending on how it's oriented. There's a camera on off switch, a microphone switch, and volume controls. On the back, there's a white backing and rear firing speakers on the two ends. I've got my Echo Show on a stand, but it can also be wall mounted like a real picture. Right off the bat, I have to admit that I really don't like the design. Maybe it's just because it looks like a picture frame. It's kind of giving me that vibe of those digital picture frames that were all the rage about eight years ago. You know, the ones where you could use an SD card or put a thumb drive in there and play your photos on a loop. This just looks really similar. I think the cheap plastic look really doesn't help. Compare that to the Nest Hub, which has this nice fabric covering the speaker along with like a silicone material on the back of the display. The Nest Hub looks good from all angles. And I can't say the same about the Echo Show, which means that it's not really ideal to place it on an island like I have it because it's not the most aesthetically pleasing. Now the stand that I bought was sold and shipped with the Echo, but it's not made by Amazon. It's a third party brand called Sanus, known for TV mounts and things like that. Altogether, the Echo Show 15 and the stand cost about $387 after tax. Although you can buy the Echo by itself for about $330. And this is my first Echo Show of any kind, but it's also a new kind of Echo Show from Amazon and a different kind of interface. The home screen is all about information rather than just photos. It also has visual ID, so it knows the different users within your household. You kind of get a buffet of information when you walk up to the display. On the left, you have a rotating carousel of photos and suggested content or actions like the current weather or recently played music, sports scores and so on. It's somewhat customizable, but on the right you have what Amazon calls widgets. Essentially, little apps that you can operate and that link to their full screen counterparts. There's a to-do list, a shopping list, recipe books, sticky notes, as well as a smart home widget. There's not much more than that at this point. Right now, they're pretty new and it's unclear if Amazon is opening this up to third-party developers. That would be ideal because it would make it a lot more useful. The first-party widgets from Amazon, though, are actually just okay. You get pretty basic functionality and for the most part they're just information tiles. If you tap into them then they link you into the full screen application and the only one that you can interact with from the home screen is the smart home favorites where you can turn certain devices on and off. You can click into the sticky note app for example and you can write a note then that note gets displayed for anyone else in the house who happens to be walking by. The widgets on the right side of the home screen are the same for everybody. It's just the content on the left the changes depending on who's looking at the display. All over the system, the user interface feels a little bit clunky and possibly rushed. It doesn't feel like they put a lot of deep thought into the user experience beyond just giving us a home screen with lots of information. For example, the smart home control app is a horizontal scrolling experience, which isn't ideal if you have a lot of devices and they've wasted a lot of space where other controls could have gone. Okay, that's fair, but listen, the real user interface is your voice, right? After all, it's a voice assistant. Well, because I had the Nest Hub right here alongside the Echo Show, it meant that I could do a comparison between the two. Set a timer for five minutes. Sure, five minutes, starting now. Set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. How do you make pancakes? Okay. How do you make pancakes? Okay, for pancakes, here's a key. 
What's the capital of Canada? Ottawa is the capital of Canada. What's the capital of Canada? The capital of Canada is Ottawa. Tell me a joke. I've got a few good ones. How did the barber win the race? He knew a shortcut. Tell me a joke. Why can't you trust Adams? Because they make up everything. Play some pop music and set the volume to five. Play some pop music and set the volume to five. Pop all day from Paul Spotify. Show me a trailer for the new Spider-Man movie. All right, showing Spider-Man trailer videos. Show me a trailer for the new Spider-Man movie. Hmm, I couldn't find any movies called Spider-Man Far From Home. What's the latest news? Here's the latest news. From CTV News at 6.40 p.m. today. What's the latest news? From CBC. From CBC News, the world this hour. Stop the timer. Stop the timer. Stop. Show me movie show times. Here are some results. Show me movie show times. Here are a few movies playing near Edmonton today. Spider-Man, No Way Home. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Benny Conto, West Side Story. If you'd like to hear more, ask me to tell you more. As you can see, I got pretty similar results between the two devices. Obviously the Echo stumbled a little bit on that Spider-Man question, but otherwise did everything that the Nest could do. Next up is media. Other than getting it to help you with household tasks and such, the second biggest reason people get these is for media consumption. And it makes a lot of sense. We spend a lot of time in the kitchen, cooking and preparing meals and such. My wife jokes that this is really the only time she gets to watch TV, which is a little bit of an exaggeration, but I get it. We're so busy that it makes sense to multitask. Plus, if you have to do some work in the kitchen, it makes it more enjoyable if you can watch or listen to something at the same time. There's a couple of ways that you can get video content on the Echo. First, you can select from one of the installed apps like Netflix, Prime Video, or Red Bull TV. Yeah, really. These are the only apps that are natively supported on the device. In fact, on the video homepage, you can see that they have YouTube listed there, but it's kind of a hack. It's essentially just opening YouTube.com since Amazon and Google have not yet worked out a deal to put YouTube on the Echo officially. Now, if your favorite streaming service isn't one of these, the Echo also supports casting. I think the big service they're missing at this point though is Disney Plus. Hopefully that becomes available soon. On the other hand, in terms of audio services, you can listen to music and podcasts through Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, TuneIn, Sirius XM, Deezer, as well as Apple Podcasts. Now you know that I'm an Apple Music user and in one of my last videos about the Nest Hub Max, I mentioned that Google wasn't supporting Apple Music on it yet. Well, about a week after I published that video, Google announced that they were now supporting Apple Music, which is awesome. But one thing that the Echo still has over the Nest is support for Apple Podcasts. And it syncs with your Apple ID, which means that if you play a podcast, it picks up right where you left off on your other device. Speaking of audio, however, we should talk about the audio quality. In my opinion, it sucks. 
It sounds a bit hollow and it has no mid to low EQ. The speakers are rear firing as well, which means that if you've got this on your counter, it just actively sounds kind of bad. I suppose that if it was hanging on a wall, the sound would be bouncing back from the wall and it could possibly sound better, but I don't think it's enough to completely change the audio profile. Now, as for video calling, you can do that as well from the Echo Show. You can call other displays and they have a feature called drop-in, which essentially allows instant video calling between Echo Show devices. Now I can't see myself ever enabling that feature because it means that essentially people can call you and instead of you choosing to answer, your device just answers and then they're right there looking at you. I realize that you can set which contacts are allowed to do that, but there's nobody out there that I would wanna give that level of access to. However, you can set up contacts and start video calls by just asking Alexa to do a video call and it will ring their Echo Show device or their phone if they have the Alexa app installed. In my testing, this worked pretty well, but keep in mind it's a little less versatile than Google Duo, for example, which is what the Nest Hub uses. Because unless someone has Echo devices in their home, they are unlikely to have the Alexa app on their phone. So it kind of limits your circle that you can chat with. But don't worry, Amazon has found a solution for that problem. How? Well, they also give you the option to link and use Skype because everyone's on Skype. All right, just a few other random thoughts. First of all, if you're a subscriber to my channel, then you know that for home security, I use Telus Smart Home Security, and I've done a review on that in one of my previous videos, if you do wanna take a look at that. But the Echo has an integration, also known as a skill, that you can use with that system. Telus doesn't actually yet offer an integration with Google Home, so I was actually eager to try this out. Now, I discovered that you can do a couple of things with the integration. You can arm, and disarm the system. Disarm the security system. What's your voice code for panel? Panel is disarmed. And I can lock and unlock my front door. Unlock the front door. What's your voice code for front door? Unlocking. Hang on. The front door is unlocked. That's pretty much it. The main thing I really would love to do is open and close my garage door, but there's no option to do that yet. I have an annoying habit of accidentally leaving it open. And so being able to just tell the Echo to, to do it would be fantastic. Hopefully that comes soon. As far as the home screen goes, some people might not like the cluttered look as opposed to the minimalist look that you get with the Nest Hub. Now I couldn't find an option to make the photo frame the default home screen on the Echo Show. You can manually select the photo frame, but it doesn't make it the default. The photos also transition way too quickly for my liking and you can't change the speed at all. On a final note, a couple of years ago, I bought an Amazon branded smart plug, which as you would expect only works with Amazon's smart assistant. And so I realized that that was a mistake after I switched my entire house to Google assistant devices. So on the upside, now I can use it to turn my Christmas tree on and off again. So here's my final thoughts about the the Amazon Echo Show 15. First of all, if you're gonna get this, you should really wall mount it. I know that you can get stands for it, but it's really meant to be on the wall for the best experience. Like I mentioned, the speakers are rear firing and meant to bounce the sound off the wall. Plus, this thing is way too big to be just sitting on your counter, and it's also kind of ugly, at least on the back, and so not really ideal for a kitchen island, for example. If you want an Echo device you can put on your counter, it's probably best to go with an Echo Show 10. Also, I didn't mention this before, but you can order orient the Echo Show horizontally or vertically. However, if you plan on watching video on it, it makes no sense to put it vertically unless you want the smallest video and the biggest black bars imaginable. Lastly, this needs some software updates. The user interface, as I mentioned, isn't as easy or as polished as what I'm used to on the Nest Hub, and it's pretty glitchy. The widgets are a cool idea, but they're pretty limited at the moment. Probably the number of people who are really interested in the Echo Show 15 at this point point in the video are Amazon's target audience for this device. Ultimately, there's a pretty small niche of consumers who are going to want this particular Echo device in their house. All right, thanks for watching as always. If you found this video interesting, click that like button. It helps other people find this content and I really appreciate the support. Also, if you want to see more of my videos, just click subscribe. Thanks and we'll see you in the next one.